I'm John Hanna for CDTV Downnet in New York, and we have Greg Womack, President of Womack Investment Advisors, joining us from Edmond, Oklahoma. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Well, good morning, John. I'm doing well. Uh, we're hanging in there. Yeah, the, the word that comes to mind is whip sawed, oh, man. being jerked from one extreme to the other. No, something like that. What happens in the um, uh, in your mind? Uh, you manage money for for investors. What happens into your mind going to those volatile days? Well, typically, uh, yes, there are typical signs of of, of uh, future coming volatility. And and we've kind of been expecting, uh, to some degree, some volatility for some time, and, and we're just having everything line up in, a, in what we call a perfect storm. You got Europe situation, which is getting you know, uglier, and they're trying to solve that debt crisis in in those countries over there. And then you have you know the debt ceiling deal, and, and we've got debt issues. Um, and then you know you've got a lot of factors here that are just you know the uncertainty and the, the potential for a double dip recession, economy having some, hitting some soft patches here and there, and, and just not rebounding like we want it. And so you add those things up, and even though earnings season has been really good in general, um, just a lot of uncertainty. So the market doesn't like uncertainty. And so what goes through our minds is how can we number one protect or mitigate losses when volatility picks up. And then we need to be prepared to when things calm down and, and, and you know, watch for opportunities to put money to work. Because that's when you really make money is when you, when you buy at the right opportunity. Right, and, and we spoke about this last week that uh, you were preparing for, uh, during the uh, debt debate that you, you're preparing some uh, protection for your uh, uh, some of your uh, money that you want, right? Exactly, John, and that has paid off extremely well. Uh, you know, we 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 not only bought you know some put options on the general market. Uh, you know, this is around Friday uh, uh, week uh, to you know f- actually the uh, the end of July, and then Monday the first. Um, things just didn't look good. The way the volume was trading and the volatility index was starting to creep up. The volatility index has been extremely low, and uh, we have not had a major correction since '09. So we were due, and so we did put some uh, protection mechanisms in our portfolios and two of our, in the funds that we own. And we also were exposed to quite a bit of gold and silver, which this during this market downturn really helped the portfolios. So it goes to show that you know diversification, having a defensive strategy uh, when the when the conditions are right, that it, it does pay off. Um, and and so we've actually had clients call us and say, "What's going on? You know, the market's down." You know, five nine percent, and and here we're barely budging, and that's a good feeling. And uh, you know, it's just something that we you know, we had to take a chance at protecting, and that's what you need to do during these type of times. But for the average investor who hasn't done anything at this point, you, you don't want to make stupid decisions right now. Now, could we we could have another leg down because of all the uncertainty still out in the market. Um, you know, we could have a, a rebound, a nice dead cat bounce or bear market rally, um, and then at some point it could be a leg down. So you've got to be careful uh, not to make stupid decisions, but don't, you, know, you also have to just be looking at what you own. If you have cash, at some point you probably want to add to those who still have good long-term prospects, who pay good dividends, and uh, you want to have a strategy. So take time to take some of the emotions out of it uh, for your average investor and really look at, at the opportunities, not just the fear. Is this one of those days where like, uh, you, know, you have an investment advisor um, uh, protecting your money uh, with their own personal strategies? Is this well? I think it's beneficial if you can if you can find an investment advisor who has 
um, the ability and nimbleness to to not just buy and hold, but to move money around into alternative asset classes, um, you know, such as managed futures. Uh, and there's a couple of limited partnership managed future funds out there, or there's a couple of open-ended funds out there as well. Um, you know, I still think the gold trade is is a long-term a good place to be, although it could be volatile. You don't want to run out and just purchase a bunch of gold right now. You you know you want to trade on dips, and um, so you, really a strategy is important. Most people, John, listen to various sources and try to come up with a hodgepodge strategy. But what they're doing is they're listening to one advisor has a specific strategy, another advisor has a specific strategy, and they try to glean a little bit from each. But what I find is if if, if you got to have a strategy that, you, that, that your investments all are doing the same thing. They're, they're, they're reacting differently to market conditions. Therefore, you have maybe less upside, but your downside is minimized. Uh, and that's what you've got. I think in this kind of market, you know, you've got to be willing to, my upside may be limited, but, but my downside is going to be substantially less than the market. And so you have to tailor that. And if, if you don't have the experience, you really need to get with an investment advisor who does and, and give it time. And you've got to do your own due diligence about the investment advisors themselves. Exactly. But what a wild week. I mean, um, you know, the, the S&P for the week was down uh, 9%. It was, it was up, and up and down and all over, but it finished 9% down for the week on the S&P. Gold was up about 2%. And... Um, and, you know, there, there's, there's some really good opportunities out there. We're seeing some stocks trade in the, in the uh, you know, 7 to 8 PE ratio, which is half that of the, uh, the average S&P 500 stock. You know, historically, John, uh, PE ratios get down into about the 9 range, 9 PE ratio, before they, the, the markets find a really good bottom, a healthy bottom for longer term. So... Right now we're about a 14, so either stock prices must come down further to really become really cheap and attractive in general, or you know the earnings have to continue just to go through the roof uh, and stay at the current level. Um, so to get from 14 to nine, you know one of those things or both have to happen. Now there are a handful of stocks that we look at and we see that are, are trading below the you know the, the nine nine and below and are paying nice dividends, those are the ones that you can feel comfortable in, in kind of maybe get, dipping your toe in and, and adding to, you know, to those type of holdings. But whatever you do over the next few weeks, you, you probably need to have a very long-term outlook. Um, you know, dividends are going to help. Get into div, you know, dividend stocks if you're going to do it. Get into the, you know, the PEs that are you know, that 10 or below. And, and you probably could have less downside if the market were to continue to go through a downturn. Okay. Um, well, what do you have for us for the uh, Market Week report? Well, like I said, you know, the, the S&P finished off at about 9% for the, for the week. Um, really what saved the market on Friday was the jobs reports. That... I mean, the market was was down five. The Dow was down on 500 points on Thursday of last week. Friday, uh, the market before the the market even opened, the jobs report came out. Um, let me get my numbers here. Uh, it, it, you know, Friday, a Thursday's level was such a panic. So the level of interest in the monthly job figures was so high that the moment they came out at 8:30 a.m. Eastern time. The Bureau of Labor Statistics website crashed. That's how much interest was in the jobs report. Fortunately, it saved the day. 117,000 new jobs in July. June's figures were revised upward to 46,000. Private employers added 154,000 jobs. The federal government cut 14,000 jobs. Uh, states cut about 23,000. And so... You know, that's that was kind of a breath of fresh air after you know Friday morning after just a terrible week and of the markets. And like I said, the markets rallied as soon as the market opened up 170 some points on the Dow on Friday. Uh, then even reverse and went 
even 170 points lower, negative. And so that's what we call whipsawed in the markets. And uh, the Dow closed um, uh, down 90 points the, the, uh, on Friday. The S&P was flat. So really, um, that's kind of the, the week that we saw as far as the big economic news um, was on Friday. Going forward, you know, it's it's all going to depend upon how the European situation goes. Um, you know, the banks are you know possibly in, in 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 trouble there, so the government has to get in Europe has to get into position of not tightening interest rates but easing them and buying back these um, these these troubled assets uh, that we have in the in the banks, these countries and their debt. Uh, I think once they kind of get that resolved, that's going to help take some of the fear trade off the market. Um, but then we're probably going to be looking at, at some point, our economy is a fear of a double dip. And um, and if that's the case, then don't be surprised to see Fed Chairman Bernanke and company uh, come out with another round of quantitative easing, which, um, you know, which will be possibly a uh, short-term fix, but long-term it's going to continue to hurt the dollar and interest rates eventually will have to go up. So that's kind of in summary. I'll be uh, in the uh, cool area of Montana this week enjoying the mountains and hopefully much cooler weather. And hopefully the markets will cool off while I'm gone as well. There you go. There you go. Uh, Well, take some uh, needed uh, time off. And uh, I'll talk to you next week. That's Greg Womack, President of Womack Investment Advisors, joining us from Edmond, Oklahoma. And I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net in New York.